So, greetings to you. Welcome to my next class on uh, metal finishing uh, industries because metal finishing industries is uh, uh, one aspect of uh, industrial scenario that uh, is very important and highly classified as a red category industry and the red category industry means the effluents or waste generated in uh, metal finishing industry are considered as highly dangerous. Therefore, uh, I thought it is prudent to include uh, metal finishing uh, industry operations and uh, knowledge about that even though it has nothing to do with the nothing much to do with the elect uh, pollution monitoring as such environmental pollution monitoring as such, but it, it has uh, all the things to do with electrochemistry and uh, pollution and uh, the metal uh, treatment. There are basically four electroplating uh, four metal finishing industries um, which are very prominent. One is electroplating, another is PCB manufacture, third one is phosphating, anodizing and other coatings and painting. You can imagine that almost every industry, almost every operation of our modern life is associated with metal finishing industry. We may not have much to do, but right from day one, um, right from the morning to evening, we are all dealing with metals and most of the metals that we deal have undergone some sort of uh, metal finishing operation, either electroplating or PCB manufacture, phosphating, anodizing, coating, painting everywhere. The, we all uh, wake up with the painting uh, of our walls and our houses. We live in such houses and uh, painting is nothing but uh, it may not be exactly metal finishing, but your house gates and other things they are all metals painted 99 percent of the time. They are all electroplated or painted and uh, Sometimes, they are many of your gates and walls and grills etcetera, they are all phosphatized, anodized, coated. Uh, there are many things, the pens what you hold may be coated, the watches what you wear are coated with electroplating, titanium, gold, silver, and the handle, door handles what you handle, all are metal finished uh, materials and uh, the TV screens what you see, they are all uh, coated with plastics and metals and uh, powders. The gadgets what you hold, they are all metal coated, metal finished, anodized, uh, thousands of things what you handle in day to day life, they are all uh, uh, result of metal finishing operations. Basically, as I have told you, metal finishing operation is, are uh, classified into these four major op operations and uh, among them electroplating is a very large, uh, occupies a very major uh, industry place. Even though electroplating is by itself is not a major industry. There are thousands of small, 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 small electroplaters who do not come under the purview of the pollution control, but they produce electroplated materials and the byproducts or effluents or emissions from such industries are hazardous anyway in uh, particular. So, it is uh, important for us to know about uh, metal finishing industries, especially with respect to uh, the effluents and emissions. Then next comes PCB manufacture. 
printed circuit boards are part and parcel of our life, our TVs and uh, washing machines, microwave ovens and many day to day life, uh, day to day equipment what we use in our house, office etcetera. Most of them contain PCBs and our uh, buses, transport, TVs, uh, scooters, uh, uh, many gadgets they all require PCBs and PCB manufacture is sort of uh, uh, specialized uh, electroplating I would say because PCB manufacture involves the not only metal coating, cladding and other things including uh, lacquering and uh, other metal gum finish, uh, finishing etcetera and uh, it is a fairly intense industry that is highly mechanized include even electroplating is highly mechanized. Then there are other industries such as phosphating, anodizing and coating and uh, these are these things do not come under electroplating as such, but you can classify them as supporting industries. Quite often before electroplating many of the metals undergo cleaning and after cleaning of oil and grease etcetera, they undergo phosphating, anodizing especially all aluminum compounds are uh, marketed as anodized uh, compounds including many of the day to day uh, materials which we handle and coating definitely yes, not only metal coating, but paints and other things and painting of course, as I have explained to you that we all live in painted houses 99 percent of us anyway. So, after metal fabrication for any particular use you can imagine they are finished to a final product requirement requirement basically. So, this involves metal stripping, metal removal of undesirable oxides on the metal and cleaning, processing, plate processing involves plating, phosphating, anodizing etcetera and then rinsing and drying. You can imagine in all these operations metal fabrication what does it mean to a normal lay person. A metal fabrication is a an operation where a metal is given a particular shape for a function for which it is intended. Suppose you take a metal and bend it like this and then make a car the fabrication of the car uh, metal plates for car uh, to what it looks like in the final finished shape without the painting, electroplating or painting and other things that is known as fabrication. It may in fabrication may involve something like uh, uh, the riveting and then uh, joining, bending and then uh, fixing and then uh, forging and many other operations are there. They are all involved in metal fabrication. A welding also is one of the important thing in uh, metal finishing and uh, they are the basic requirement of a uh, of any machine or requirement um, function for a function and they are finished uh, afterwards they have to be beautified or functionalized to specific tasks for which they are intended to use. For example, if you have a metal body bent for making a car, car uh, uh, bonnet will have a different shape, car dickey will have a different shape, car door will have a separate uh, shape and all these things require uh, need to be finished electrochemically or mechanically uh, for the function they are intended for. And, uh, they may be finished uh, in such a way that all of them look uh, same color uh, for aesthetic purposes or they may look different colors. Some of them may be plated, 
some parts for example, the front bonnet may be plated, the back side may be red color, blue color etcetera, doors may be different color, glass will be there. all those metal finishing things are there involved in the um, metal surface finishing. So, the finished metal piece must undergo several operations before it takes the shape of the material which you see in your real world. First thing is it must be stripped of its oxygen, oxide uh, corrosion particle, corroded particles. Nobody would like to see corroded particles on the metals and uh, it will look ugly. So, metal must be stripped off the deposits of mud and other things and then uh, it must be cleaned. So, metal cleaning and stripping of oil etcetera is uh, a very important uh, aspect that is part of electrochemical treatment also and then removal of undesirable oxides. Sometimes there will be deposits, corrosion and then sometimes uh, if it is like aluminum or silver or something there will be oxide deposits and all those things are removed to be removed and then it must be cleaned to a shiny nice finish. So, for that either mechanical treatment like buffing and other things are involved or it can be cleaned chemically also put acids, alkalis etcetera until they are ready for further processing. What are the further processing operations? They are plating, phosphating, anodizing etcetera. There are many other operations lacquering and etcetera I had already told you and then once you in e after each of these operations like stripping, removal of oxides, cleaning, processing, plating etcetera, there are number of operations in between where the metal has to get rid of the memory of the previous operation. For example, after uh, cleaning, um, after removal of the oxides, corrosion etcetera, it must be cleaned and washed and this kind of washing is best done by dipping, taking the material and dipping it in water or acidic or alkaline solutions and then again not just once, but two or three operations first dip, second dip, third dip etcetera. So, many of the rinsing operations are generators of effluents which may not have good uh, properties with respect to environment. So, rinsing operations are also important followed by drying. So, again drying one has to be careful, it can be done by done mechanically or it can be done by heat or it can be done by simple air blowing etcetera. So, these are the basic requirements of uh, metal finishing treatment, stripping, removal of undesirable oxides, cleaning, processing rinsing and drying. So, the total liquid waste in electroplating are not really voluminous, but they are extremely dangerous or toxic. Quite often we end up using uh, acids, alkalis and metals such as metals means metal salts in electroplating such as arsenic, chromium, zinc, copper, nickel, tin, silver, rhodium, palladium and then anions such as cyanides, alkaline cleaners, grease, oil, polymer, ammonia you can see everything I have written here grease, ammonia, complexing agents, poly electrolytes and many more things in a that are required in electroplating units. So, you, can, you may assume that all these uh, chemicals are there in every electroplating uh, unit. No, the answer is no, 
there may be somebody may be using only acids, somebody may be using only alkalis, acids, alkalis, somebody may be only making chromium plating unit, somebody may be having, others may be having just a zinc plating unit and somebody may have uh, a copper plating unit, PCB most of the PCB manufacturers will have copper plating units and then some people may try to coat things with uh, metals with nickel, iron is coated with nickel and uh, uh, to make your specs, spectacles, nickel coating and many other elements will be there. Our ships are all coated with uh, tin because uh, tin uh, as an undercoat in a shape keeps the marine animals at bay. Fungus will not grow on the ships coated with tin on the bottom, but it has got its own environmental implications. I may will not be going into detail except to say that the most of the tin that we use in our organic compounds uh, as a ship's coating disturbs the marine ecology making them uh, sort of uh, um, lose their identity in terms of uh, male female characteristics. Okay. So, there, there may be alterations in genes and uh, we use trioctyl tin and tri uh, uh, then we use uh, tetra uh, not tetraoctyl tin, but uh, trioctyl tin is very well known, tributyl tin and many other things we use for painting in our ships. Silver coating, of course, everybody knows that uh, many of our uh, household items are silver coated. There was a big industry of uh, silver coating on household uh, vessels in uh, Madhya Pradesh, Indore. Uh, they are known as uh, Devar, Devar uh, steel that is a place uh, where uh, steel, uh, silver coating used to go on a large scale and silver coating again used to use cyanides and uh, mm, cyanide salts of silver. Gold of course, cannot be plated without cyanide. Um, even now 90 percent of the gold plating has been is based on cyanides, but uh, slowly things are changing not slowly even quite fast now and uh, cyanide plating is banned nowadays, but still cyanide is a very important chemical. Usually I will say that with cyanide we die and without cyanide also we die. That is my bottom line with respect to cyanide. Cyanide is so important industrially, we cannot really imagine. Sometimes cyanide is used in pharmaceutical companies to prepare specific, specific uh, compounds and uh, cyanide is in electroplating is definitely dangerous and platinum, palladium, gold, many of them are coated with uh, uh, cyanide uh, electrolytes and then again continuing on the same line, I can say alkaline cleaners again are a problem in our environment because alkaline cleaners essentially as effluents salinize the soils. They were agriculture if you we let them into the environment without treatment, alkaline uh, material salts will make the soil unfertile, infertile. So, they are not comfortable, acids definitely not people are not comfortable because they cause burning and other things, grease nobody likes, but we generate lot of grease anyway in all uh, industrial operations, oils we store metals. Uh, we dip the metals in oil when we uh, when we stack them one above another so that there should not be much corrosion and uh, oil removal again is a very important operations we coat them with polymers so that uh, there should not be any scratches and other things and then ammonia 
complexing agents, poly electron, every one of these are environmental hazards and there is nothing like environmentally safe compound and electroplating is definitely a problem with uh, uh, the effluents. They generate gaseous emissions, they generate liquid effluents, then they generate solid sludge which we do not know how to deal with that because of the ignorance until 1970s and 80s. We did not know that the things could be so dangerous and after 1980s we, we have developed quite a few treatment options and alternate options for several electroplating operations that are really dangerous. Now, coming back to our discussion on the electroplating what I would like to tell you is electroplating wastes originate from batch operations that is every electroplating has to all these operations which I had described to you as cleaning, surface uh, removing, oil de-oiling, degreasing and all these operations they are all batch operations and then there are rinse operations after the batch operations there will be just dipping it in water, taking it out into another one, taking it into another water bath etcetera and they are all dilute effluents which are which cannot be treated economically. So, but hazardous all the same. So, that is another part and uh, what are the major types of wastes coming from electroplating? Here they are. One is proprietary solutions and process accelerators and surface finish chemicals. Here now I am going to uh, put you on to the different operations involved in uh, the electroplating and I wanted you to understand that uh, the chemicals that are involved in uh, electroplating can be made by the manufacturer by dedicated manufacturer who supplies you the chemical equipments or chemical salts and solutions etcetera. And then sometimes they can be made by, uh, but by the electroplater himself, he can buy the salts and make himself. So, the major types of waste if especially if electroplating is done by not so educated people, then they would prefer to buy a ready made solution continue the operations of plating etcetera, because somebody has set them an industry you dip it here, dip it there, dip it here, wash it and then uh, put on the switch it will start plating, remove it from the plating and then your material is ready, sell it away. So, that kind of operations who do not have basic degree in uh, basic required knowledge in the chemistry of operations also could be a very prominent electroplater. So, such people use proprietary solutions, those who have certain knowledge they can use their own solutions. And among the proprietary solutions, we still have many operations, we do, we do not know, they will not reveal the chemical components or the concentrations of the proprietary solutions. And then there are additional uh, chemicals that go into proprietary solutions, they are known as process accelerators and surface finish uh, quality surface finish uh, chemicals. They will give you matte finish, sometimes they will give you very shining, very polished uh, surface, sometimes they will give you uh, designer uh, finish and all those things. They are all proprietary chemicals designed to give you specific appearance, but they generate a waste for who the characteristics of the waste are not known because the proprietor makes the chemicals and he keeps on making changes 
he does not bother to educate you or the people who use them are not educated enough to understand what are the kind of chemicals that come out from the electroplating operations. Now, second type cyanide concentrates lot of people use as I had told you that people use cyanides for gold plating, silver plating and several other types of plating. And these cyanide platings again as uh, I had explained to you involve batch operations, rinsing, batch operation, rinsing all containing cyanides now. So, end of the day, end of the operations there will be cyanide waste from parts per million level to several percentage level. So, again one has to worry about how to treat cyanide plating solutions and cyanide dipping solutions. So, same thing is true with chromates. Chromates what we have? Chromate plating is very important in our day to day life. Many of the shining things we are made on steel they are all chromate plated. Uh, many of our tablespoons and other things industrial operations steel they it gives impart certain hardness. Metal finishing is never about the finishing alone, but it also imparts particular kind of functionality to the metals. So, if you want a particular metal uh, surface to be very hard because it is going to be exposed in a uh, very harsh environment then you make it chromium and uh, there are two different types of chromium hard chromium and uh, hard chromium plating and light chromium plating. A light chromium plating is what we use for uh, spoons and other things we can uh, give coating make it look shiny and they will work for some time and then uh, that is the end of it. But hard chromium plating is a permanent fixture on the metal plate which will be exposed to high uh, harsh conditions and uh, it will be there for years to come. Many of our earth mover equipment etcetera they need to survive harsh environments and they are all coated with hard chromium plating. Hard chromium plating is a very important industrial activity nearly 90 percent of chromium plating is uh, done with hard chromium. Uh, and again chromium itself is a very bad environment uh, uh, polluter because chromium is uh, poisonous. Chromium plating is uh, bad and uh, especially hexavalent chromium causes cancer. Many of the plating metals uh, used in plating they are all mutagenic, teratogenic and then toxic and then uh, hazardous carcinogenic. So, almost all uh, electroplating wastes normally end up uh, being um, hazardous. Then I, I am talking about cyanide rinse waste waters I have already talked enough then I am talking about con concentrated acids and pickling. Uh, here I want to tell you that uh, stripping and pickling is again a very important operation especially in steel plating, steel operations. Mild there are different kinds of steel, mild steel, stainless steel you must have all heard and then uh, many of the acids and alkalis are used for cleaning the metals uh, to give a nice finish. Copper uh, material if you take and dip it in a nitric acid it will give you a very nice uh, finish of uh, copper color, uh, but the waste are dangerous anyway because they contain acids now strong acids. So, most of the metals are dipped in uh, acids and process solutions. Now, again what kind of acid dips we are talking about? When metals are dipped in acids we do not want the metals to damage also. 
So, it should inhibit corrosion that is the whole idea. So, the we add inhibitors. So, inhibitors have got a property to increase the concentration of the acid so that they can be effective. These inhibitors again is a separate uh, topic, electroplating itself is a separate topic, but since we are dealing with the pollution control uh, um, aspects, I just want to touch these uh, aspects of electroplating and metal finishing. And apart from strong acids and rinse waters, we will also have concentrated alkalis which end up as spent alkaline cleaning solutions. These spent alkaline cleaning solutions also are sort of uh, waste uh, uh, hazardous substances that affect the fertility of the soil. I already explained to you. Agriculturally, if you throw them on the soil, the soil is gone. And there are other kinds of waste containing metal compounds, oils, soaps, etcetera. And uh, these oils and soaps are used oils and soaps and uh, they are environmental nuisance. So, oils of course, cannot be used and reused even though a lot of people efforts are going on regarding the use of oils and uh, uh, reuse, recycling of the oils, but still there will be a lot of problem with uh, soaps and oils. Then there are other uh, requirements of an electroplating industry where we need hot water, cold water etcetera and then we have a air cooler system, water cooling system etcetera temperature because many of the operations electroplating operations are done at higher temperature. So, the waste need uh, the sample uh, the bath should be kept at higher temperature and for that you need the steam, then cooling towers etcetera water circulation they are all required. And uh, even though these things do not require treatment as such, but uh, the condensates etcetera need to be handled properly with respect, so that they do not become environmental nuisance value. So, the acids, how much acids are there in the industrial effluents containing in the industrial electroplating units? The acids are hydrochloric acids, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, succinic acid, acetic acid and thousands of uh, other hundreds of uh, I would not say thousands, but they could be uh, there are could be hundreds of acids taking malic acid, succinic acid, tartaric acid many of them are being regularly used and those in the business know quite a few things about the acids much more than what I am trying to tell you, but they could be present up to 10 percent of the solutions of the total effluents. And sometimes alkaline baths also contain sodium sulphide and then cyanide, sodium hydroxide. Uh, many other uh, alkalines are there, alkaline solutions. So, the total acidic and alkaline waste themselves can be approximately about 10 percent of the total uh, effluents. That itself poses a great danger, because you just cannot hope to combine acids and alkalis to produce neutral um, water. That uh, react equation does not work, even though in theory everything works but the simple chemical reaction of mixing acids and alkalis is uh, no more there because of the complications involved in the matrix of the electroplating solutions. What are the matrix? The matrix could be oils, grease and anions, cations and several other things which are there in the electroplating solutions. So, cleaning is normally accomplished by organic solvents, pickling emulsifiers, sodium hydroxide, phosphoric acid and other phosphates, silicates are there, carbonates are there, 
and wetting agents all these things end up as a composition of only metal cleaning operations. As I told you if you remember metals are stacked one above the another and when electroplating is to be done they are all to be pulled out, oil to be removed, grease to be removed, acid must be uh, the metal surface should be cleaned of the corroded particles like that there will be hundreds of operations. For such operations there are not only acids or alkalis, but there could be organic solvents, there could be other phosphates, there could be silicates, there could be carbonate, there could be wetting agents, there could be many other uh, um, organic compounds which have been investigated and used industrially in millions of tons in the electroplating industries. That is why the electroplating industry effluents are something which are really risky, hazardous and toxic. So, cyanide salts are normally extensively used in plating because they are good oxide solvents uh, and give brighter finish and less porous plating. So, cyanides we are still not able to get rid of the cyanide as a component in the effluents in the component in the process baths, but uh, largely nowadays it is happening some day we will be getting rid of it. Even then there is no way of getting rid of cyanide in our day to day life. As I had told you earlier with cyanide we die without cyanide also we die. So, the character and strength of the plating waste generally varies considerably depending on the plating and rinsing operations. Cyanide baths are alkaline and chromate baths are acidic. Usually this is the condition. If the cyanide baths are alkaline and chromate baths are acidic, can you just combine the different kinds of baths emanating out of electroplating industry. Just pause a little bit and think what happens if it is just sodium hydroxide and acid it just produces water, but chromate uh, effluents will have chromium and acids, cyanide baths will have cyanide and alkalis. The moment you try to mix all of them together to produce water, the cyanide will react to give you cyanogen gas which may kill the operator. Chromium may precipitate and after precipitation it may land on the soil making the soil toxic and by some chance even if you treat it and minute quantities of chromate in the water, minute quantities of aluminum in water minute quantities of any metal in water can affect can settle down at the bottom of the uh, stream where the depth of the stream could be very 1 or 2 millimeter maybe 1 or 2 half a centimeter, but that half centimeter zone all along the river bed is a repository of thousands of any variety thousands of varieties of animals including protozoa small fish and this and that etcetera. All those things will their weight is small concentration can that can affect their composition also required is small. So, even parts ppm level of the materials can affect the benthic uh, life forms very seriously. So, uh, that is the challenge the governments face when dealing with the industrial effluents emanating from electroplating units. So, in the treatment of metal plating waste 
what is required is minimization of waste and rin rinsing wastes. We cannot really get rid of the rinsing wastes and waste in electroplating at all, it is almost impossible. So, what we can do then? We can minimize the solutions, we can reuse the solutions, filter and reuse like that. There are there could be thousands of operations that can be um, organized and uh, that is possible. Then I can have a, some sort of a physico chemical treatment of the effluents. In the physico chemical treatment again I have several options and uh, there are ways and means of separating the pollutants in a simple way or in complicated way depending upon the requirement of the environment and uh, specific process details are usually dependent on the toxicity, toxicity aspects of the metals which we are dealing with. Suppose it is iron as a waste, then it is not really dangerous in the environment, it can lie around somewhere or it can be precipitated and lying around that is not a big problem. But if it is chromium even in ppm level we are at a risk. So, um, the depending on the quantity that we are handling, we will be dealing with physico chemical processes. So, uh, gravity feed is one thing, non overflowing emergency holding tanks we can have for toxic metals and salts. The why non overflowing? Because we do not want the toxic materials to overflow and go out of control. And uh, so, if there is overflowing, I can have one more dike around it for holding the chemicals, overflowing chemicals. So, simple physical tasks and physical gravity separations, etcetera, they all uh, require some additional materials uh, processes rather additional processes for handling the electrochemical waste. We will examine more options for electrochemical waste treatment in our next class because I think it is very important for all of you to know about the dangers of the electrochemical waste treatment. That is why I have gone a little deeper into this. We will continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you very much.